Welcome back, everybody, to um, to the Alienware Awesome Cup 2 second European qualifier. Uh, we just got done with the round 64 match, and we're going to be moving into the round of uh, 32. So, without further ado, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> that, that's my cue. That's my cue. But that's like we are going to be seeing the match of the smooth baby, smooth baby butts, excuse me, versus striped socks. Let's go straight into the drafts and picks. Again, we're going to be seeing this match being played on Rivet. So for the Striped Sox, we are going to be seeing a Scree, a Swiggins, and a Nibs. A, a terrifying combination, the Swiggins Nibs. I've seen it happen before. It's absolutely destructive. Then again, on the Smooth Baby Butts, we're seeing Clunk, Skulldeer, and Genji. We've seen well, Skulldeer Clunk before in our last match. We're going to toss a Genji into the mix and see what kind of magic we can work. You know what? I don't know if we can work the magic, but I definitely think the teams can. So why don't we get into this? Definitely. Give us a countdown and let's get started. You got it, boss. In five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. And we're, we're down. We're getting. We're ready to go. Things are happening. <clears throat> so, ribbit again. Clunk, Skulldeer. It's gonna be terrible. Mm, that Genji, that Genji kind of, uh, it scares me a little bit because mm -hmm. you know if somebody gets cocooned, the throw's coming and the explode's coming shortly after. Then again, as I said before, we have that Nibs and Swiggins comp. Toss in a scree with that. Grab that totem down. It's gonna prevent the forward movement and allow for the pushes. But it seems like Savang is just gonna go straight away for some turret pokes and it's just gonna eat up some health in mid. Uh, I think everybody has base abilities at this point. Uh, excuse uh, no. me. No, Genji is running with the AA to poke down. I I agree with that. <laughs> you want to make sure you keep these uh, bigger characters at bay with a lot of poke. Absolutely. But you know, here we see this mid control coming out again, and it just seems to me at this point the bigger characters are holding down that mid, and it looks like Skulder is going to be taking a lot oh, of damage right now. Nice. And Scree's Scree is going to go ahead. Not have a little cheeky, cheeky, um, what am I call it? Lightning rod. And the first kill is gonna come out in favor of Strain Socks. These names are great. Wackintosh <laughs> getting taken down <laughs> from Smooth Baby Butts. <clears throat> oh man. Yeah, I, I can see potential in the Swiggins Nibs comp. Oh, it's, the, the potential is there. absolutely there. It's, it's completely deadly. <laughs> it's completely deadly. Absolutely, there's there's no escape. If you're getting hooked, expect that nibs to come in right after. <laughs> this comp is so good, you'll get hooked on it. Hey, I'll see myself out. God, sorry. Uh, we need the uh, the who the yeah. <laughs> you gotta put some glasses on. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna bring sunglasses next time. Okay. Um, Anyway, well, this mid control going on a nice throw coming out, and it looks like Scree is going to narrowly escape that clunk explode. Uh, mid control again coming out in favor of Smooth Baby Butts, just holding it down with those big clunky characters, including Clunk himself. <laughs> bulky is probably a better word. You're correct. Bulky. I wouldn't really consider Genji bulky, but he definitely has that. You know what? You just, when he goes to his Iron Temple and he just pumps, you know what? He's 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 good in his own way. So I I think you should be a little more considerate. Fair enough. Now one thing that I do want to point out right now is this screen who went with Totem off the bat, he can effectively block off that jump pad if he places his Totem into that mid-jungle area. So he yeah, does it right now, and you nuts. see it right there. Nice. Us with the predictions. You know what? That's absolutely true, and that's going to prevent a lot of things from happening, including the bounce throw, the bounce explode, the bounce bite, as well as the bounce cocoon. So the bounce everything, you get the idea. It effectively that... closes off a shortcut to the top lane. <laughs> And it's 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 a good way to like uh, sort of nullify the, the quick burst that these guys can can put out um, if they do do uh, using the bouncer. It's gonna really just um, put sort of uh, again. It's, it's just again. putting a strain on them. They can't actually move into the top lane until they take that down. Uh, unfortunately, it is a very long cooldown. It looks like Nips is gonna get a lot of damage out. Forcing Skulder to kind of retreat to his team, and the that jump explode is going to land a little 500 poke. Onto the Scree. Scree is taking a lot of damage right now. He's going to escape with three bars, and it looks like uh, the Swiggins is going to be down there with him. 
Oh yeah, well, that's exactly what they want to avoid, and that's what Genji, you know, not Genji, uh, sorry, Shree is trying to avoid. Um, a few pokes coming out here, and the cocoon is going to land, the throw is going to hit as well, a lot of damage is going to be done, and it's going to force Swiggins to kind of go back with half health, retreat a little bit, and this will allow them to kind of retake that mid control. Yes, yes, and yes. The mid control, as you said, uh, with the bigger characters, you're gonna have. Looks like a throw's gonna come out. Excuse me, but a throw's gonna come out and an explode's gonna hit, and he <laughs> may be going down. That is going to be kill. Nibs oh, is, that is a, a nice damage. Deal is gonna go. Gonna actually, no. The punch Dude. is gonna pick her up. That is going to be a two for none in favor of Smooth Baby Butts. Oh, and that might be that might be a third kill if we with. No, he does it with the turrets again. The totems. The totem. He did that act. He tried to save Nibs with the totem. It was a really good totem. And there's gonna be a lot of damage coming in on that top turret. You know, they have a few seconds before that Nibs gets down. This actually may be the top turret coming down. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it should. It's about yeah. a bar. It's about well, a bar right now. An excellent push coming out of smooth baby butts. But uh, that double kill definitely allowed that turret to be just torn apart. And there Clunk has gonna... great. The great thing about Clunk's range day is that like it's just you know it's taking its time and it's just, you know you're gonna get it eventually so just keep on firing. And a nice oh, counter engagement going on right now. A lot of damage being dealt by the uh, striped socks. Oh yes. Uh, well, actually, if we look at the graph here for damage dealt that we can get up with using the power of magic technology, um, we can we can sort of see where the things happened. Uh, you can see where the double kill happened and that um, right now the striped socks are actually on a pretty steep rise up in terms of damage. They just, these tiny, uh... And the explode is actually going to be hitting on that Nibs, but uh, this Nibs is going to be forced out, and this screen's in a really bad situation right now. But we saw that kind of set up there, just in case the screen needed some help. The Swiggins is right there, ready to kind of dive in. Unfortunately enough for them, they didn't need the Swiggins to dive in, so it's going to save a lot of his HP at this point, and he's going to be able to kind of stay in and thwart off this uh, push on top, but if we take a look at that bottom turret, it's going to start getting pounded by Savong. Oh wow! You know what? Yes, that's that's the thing that they can do right now. Oh, the Genji's cocoon. They can um. And it looks like Wackintosh is going to be in a lot of trouble right now, and he is actually going to go down to the turret. Savong is going to be taking yeah. a lot of damage as well, and this is going to force Smooth Baby Butts to retreat back <laughs> and teleport back. You laugh every single time I say smooth baby butts. I, I know, I am I am immature. But but I really want to get back to the graph because it actually shows something funny. And that's um every time there's a counter engagement, you see these spikes on the graph. And you can you can clearly see how much damage right now that the, the baby butts are actually going up. You can see this huge almost vertical just a line. It's just showing, alright, we're closing in here. And the more damage you do, the more Genji's taking a lot of damage. Genji's actually gonna go down to the saw blade. But this is going to be a nice little counter attack coming out on the smooth baby butts, taking down Nibs, a one for one exchange. That's nice. I actually thought the Genji was going to survive that because that was a good cocoon, but uh, Scree was there ready with the soul blade. He's actually building damage on it, so he wants to do he wants to do the bursts, I think. Oh, that's a dangerous engagement right there. And the nice totem, a nice totem. totem coming out. You've been seeing a lot of those. I am like looking forward to the later parts of the game. I'm very impressed with the uh, totems that he's been laying out this game. You know, as we said earlier, he can effectively block off a shortcut to the top, causing them to back up and use their jump head and take the extra That's few one, seconds that's going to take. Two, and the, the expl explode but the escape coming out on Swiggins just uses jump head to escape. Nips is going to be in this fray right now. Screen notices his team is in a lot of trouble, just trying to get those pokes in and keep people kind of suppressed in a sense. Yeah, you know, the Swiggins actually juke there by tapping his uh, movement. Oh, he's going to be taking a lot of damage right now. Skulder, but the clone coming up for the explode is going to land on him. Oh, the is going fight to pick comes up. out. Nice. Swiggins is going to go down to the clunk fight, and Nibs is going to be taking a lot of damage here as well. This may be a throw Swiggins coming out, but Nibs also has the teleport. He's going to probably go down to DOT. Nope, and he actually does. Excuse me. That is going to be another kill in no favor of Sweet Baby jukes here. No fun and jukes here. And uh, we see right. he cut off the cutoff coming out there on the Genji, allowing that bottom turret to be taken down. And in my opinion, they should keep pushing that bottom. That's a lot of solar on bottom. Skulldeer disagrees and gets a kill on uh, Scree. Right, so... 
Um, going, like, a way back, I wanted to mention that uh, Swiggin's movement actually can cancel out things if you tap it so that you float. That's what he did when he was thrown. Exploder well, taking a lot of damage on the engage, but the explode coming out again is going to get him real low. Nibs is the only one battling it out right now in a 3v1 with Cocoon all members out. of baby oh. buns low. She has, she has, she, oh yeah, she just got a prosthetic dragon wing. Dragon wing prosthetic, yeah. Increasing her range, and that's going to be really good for going under the turret and just the barbecue and all the way up. It's going to be a barbecue coming out on Genji. The butterfly just got roasted. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I was I was gonna say how many how many people bring lava 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 a how do you say that lava larva. larva right there we go to to a barbecue I've never had that before. Uh, oh that's disgusting. Well, I'm pretty sure Skoldier will eat anything. <laughs> but we see uh, Stripe Sox just clearing that bottom lane right now, and the mid control going on with the smooth baby butts just kind of taking control mid as we're approaching the mid game mark at the 10 minute marker. The kill count is six to four in favor of smooth baby bots. Yes. All right. So um, looking at the build here, Clunk going for slow and snare. Uh, Skoldier saving up for some super special upgrade. We don't know what it is yet, but uh, I think it's going to be some pale meat. And the Genji Cocoon is going to miss on the explode. A lot oh, of damage coming out, being dealt by hits, and the counter engagement going on. Sweekins is taking a lot of damage. Genji is taking a lot of damage. Both teams are on the fray here. Both teams taking a lot of damage here. <laughs> damage. Is you get a damage, and you get a damage. Everyone gets a damage. And this Nibs is hunting down this Genji, but the rest of the team is there to kind oh, of. Oh, that is a nice juke by Nibs. You saw that? Just teleporting out of the snare, like like no one gives a darn. And the cocoon just narrowly missing Swiggins that would have secured the kill. You know, I think we've seen like I, I think we're seeing that the smooth baby butts are very dominant this game. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think the striped socks can do to sort of uh, push them back and keep them on mid? As far as dominant goes, I wouldn't say they're completely dominant because we've well, seen these counter initiations coming out on saw on the striped socks. We've also seen some great scree totems coming out. Like we said before, but the explode coming out is actually going to land. There's going to be a huge engagement going on for both teams. The throw is just going to miss. Nib is going to be in the fray right now just going to pound town on the Genji. <laughs> so now they're not going to town. We now know what town it is. It's what a damn town. Oh, damn. Oh, Nips, Nips you a Nips is going to be thrown into it. Are we going to see the nice teleport? Are we going to see the nice teleport? She's waiting for a teleport to be up. It does go oh, up. She she's actually still running. Again. She's still alive. Oh. He's going to pick her up, though. Excellent following and excellent awareness coming out. From the smooth baby butts, noticing that she's waiting out, and a nice explode actually landing on the screen, forcing him to go nicer, back. Nicer totem. We've seen that, and I, I, what do you think he's gonna build on that thing? For totem? Yeah. Uh, I definitely think he should get some slow. That's, that's gonna be one huge way to counteract that clunk. Yeah, and the and the uh, scoldier. Absolutely right. I totally agree. Uh, maybe even some knockback. Oh, how would that work? Tell us about that. Knockback is uh, one of the upgrades that you can get on the totem. When you drop it, it just launches people back. Obviously, knockback. But combine that with slow, and actually, we see a nice engagement going on. He nips is going to deal a lot of damage, and a lot of damage is going to come out on Savang. Savang is going to get a lot of AA damage on him from the nibs. And uh, oh, the, the throw coming throw out, and Nibs is actually taking a lot of damage. Nibs is going down to the turret, and Swiggins is going to be forced to go back. Genji hunting down the Swiggins, and that is going to be a one for none again. Both with teams being able to push and counter push effectively in this match so far. Yeah, and whoa, you know what? I think we sh I think we're gonna see Clunk build a real soon, uh, because he has his essentials. He has sustain. He has damage. He has CC. So now he should build push. And, I would like to uh, see some solar bosses being picked up at this point. Well, someone got you covered. You know, at this point, we see them attacking the uh, smooth socks. Solar oh, and, and that's in a sense a lure to kind of lure them out of that situation. And here we see Nibs again taking a lot of damage, but dealing a lot of damage as well on that Genji that's and that Skoldier that is there a for the reverse. Oh, the baits! You see that Skoldier just waiting. Great bait, oh, and bait, another... great eight out of eight. Clunk is going to get a kill as well. Swiggins is alone in a 3v1 no, oh. situation. He needs to take that up. The snare bite just Oh, the missing. stun punch is hitting the everything. The that's going to be a wipeout. Nice. I've been saying that a lot, but I really mean it. 
This should be a top turret down. Scree's got 10 seconds until he's down. Nips has got a few seconds as well. But the amount of damage that they're outputting on this turret, that should absolutely be the turret down before look any the, members. Look at the graph. The difference is just staggering. You can see where they're just... Alright, that's the triple kill. And they're actually looking to go in for the core and try and end this. Genji oh, Kikuna, not allowing that, and the knockback. We saw the knockback coming out there on the totem. Yeah, and that's another... That's a, is that another turret? I think we saw another turret go down. But, oh, Skoldier is super low, and he's going to go down. I have a feeling Genji's going to be able to pick up this scree, though. No, unfortunately not. Both members are able to get out. This is... That's still, you know, a pretty good... We're in a good situation for the Stripe Sox right now, and they can get a lot of things done if they do it quickly. Uh, that's right. They have the Skoldier down. The only thing is they have to fight off a Genji and a Clunk. Well, they have a totem, and uh, Buffer, the um, the blue scree, has actually showed that we can we can do some magic things with the totem. He's got a totem, and he knows how to use it. And it looks like a lot of damage is going to be coming out on a uh, not a lot, but a decent amount of damage. Well, and Nibs is going to be taking down. It looks like the oh, nope, he's going to nope. get picked up. But here Cheeky we go. something. In there. is going in for the explode just narrowly. Uh, Scully explode. Excuse me. The throw from Skoldier. Is the combat real? I think the combat is real. Uh, well, we're looking at 11 to 6 kill difference right now. Solar difference is uh, around 800 from the lowest to highest member of the teams. Perfect conditions for a uh, combat, if you ask me. And we're we're going to look at this Nibs trying to land the fire. The no <laughs> through the barrier, not landing, though. You know what? That's, you gotta try sometimes. And the double throw oh, coming out. There's gonna be a kill. huge explode coming out on Sabang. Taking out. Oh, and that's including itself for two. And that's gonna be Look at that. Look at the solar pile. <laughs> and Genji just, just munches it all up. Oh, Vadano gets it all. Genji just went from around 100 solar to 200 solar in about a half a second. <laughs> I just want to point that out. Oh, man. You know, that's. That that's pretty good, and I like what Nibs did, saying, "All right, fine, I, I know my teammates are dead, but I'm gonna make sure that they did not die in vain." This is, this is what happens, you know? One thing, it was like Christmas morning. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, "Oh, look at all these presents for me." Oh man, if it had been like uh, Ayla with say crab burgers, you would have been like, "Yay!" Ayla you know? doesn't really even need crab burgers anymore, but we'll discuss Ayla a little bit later. When time comes. When the time is right. And uh, Clunk is going to be the main force of Engage right now. Nip should be starting her fire any second it's, now, trying to get this uh, yeah, damage look, off. Nip is being super aggressive, and I like it. Definitely. That's, that's going to be a kill coming out on the skull here, but the explode is actually going to land, and there's going to be a one for one right now. Nip is yeah, in a really good situation, though. We Nip has to fire back up, and Nip is going to be doing a lot of damage right now again. Start the fire. Start it. Start it. Take that Clunk. Oh, she wants the Genji. Uh, that was a little bit late on the fire. Why do, why do I have a feeling that should be an expression? Like, you're a bit late on the fire. Oh! The, uh, nice idea, snare but... bite. It was a nice snare bite on Savang coming up from the jumper. Landing right idea. Sp and it looks like they're off. chasing him with the getting out of the hood upgrade from Genji. Increasing movement speed whenever Monarch Blessing is, that's, uh, that's pretty, cast. absolutely devastating for, uh, for the blue team, especially and the, the drop oh. explode coming out, but the total knockback! Oh, oh my god, strike it. socks. Yes, you're doing it right. You're doing it right. You know that? You're not doing it left. Out and Savang is going to be able to pick up the screen. And uh, here we see again, Nibs is going to be taking a lot of damage. And Savang goes for the double slow explode, lands it, and this Does should be a lot of core damage. All right, there we go. How much? All right, he has one stage of uh, missile barrage and the salvo pack, so he's going to be able to do some damage. That's a lot of damage. Two members of uh, Striped Sox being down at this point, and the Swiggins knows he can't do anything. He's going to just get thrown if he goes in. Clunk notices it. Clunk is going to go in, and we see it right now. So he's taking a lot of damage. He's going to go down to the droids, and this looks like it is going to be the end of the game. Damn. That was, for a moment there, I was ready to just call the biggest call, like comeback of all time. Well, that, that was... Excellent counter engagements coming out of both teams there, you know. We saw the fact when Scree dropped his totem in those last 45 seconds of that match, the knockback just put.
pushing everybody from smooth baby butts back and allowing the escape and lane cut off. I, so, I was, I was, that's how you do it. I mean, the knockback totem has so much potential and it's hard to actually utilize properly, but that's how you do it. It was definitely used to its great potential, as well as we saw him earlier on blocking those jumpers off from that bottom mid, effectively, once again, cutting off a shortcut and almost cutting off a lane in a sense. Uh, the Nibs always hitting those fires though. Excellent fires coming out from Nibs, but unfortunately for Striped Sox, the overwhelming push potential and power coming out from that clunk Skoldier and Genji powerhouse composition was too much. You know, I'm, I'm looking right now, I'm in spiritual cooking, increasing the max health of everybody. Oh yeah, that could have been, like if the match had went on, if Clunk had gotten, say, a medical pump and just pilled up. Oh, that, that Clunk would be invincible. That Clunk would yeah. never die. They, he, like, he could he could face take a whole Nibs fire and still be like, ha, because he has region bite. And just the sheer amount of sustain coming out from them. You have the double Scoldier Punch regen, the flowers coming out, as well as the Clunk bite, who decided to get regen. And then yeah. toss a Genji into that mix with Monarch Blessing. Yeah, and that could potentially get heal as well. The sustain that they had and mid control that they had, you know, we see 17 to 9 kills coming out, and the match lasted about 18 minutes and 15 seconds. But, you know, you spoke a bit about that graph before. We can just see where it takes off at this point. That yeah, the difference we, sort of. You can see the peaks and the valleys coming out, and that last kind of vertical line, not vertical in a sense, but it looks almost vertical coming out. From Smooth Baby. Yeah, that's uh, that's when the things happened. That's when the magic sort of, you know, that's where that that's where we for sure knew that. All right, they're gonna have the upper hand. I think. Yeah, but I mean, congratulations to Smooth Baby Butts on pushing forward. Uh, this is the second time we've seen a Scoldier clunk in two matches. Uh, our next match is going to be round 16. The top 16 teams are going to be, be not round 16, excuse me. But we are going to take a quick break and we will be right back with that match. <laughs> 